Welcome back to the drum shed. This is going to be a short video on an emergency kit and why every drummer needs to have one. I hear from you guys and ladies all of the time about how the more practical and applicable lessons I put up, you enjoy the most. So I'm going to start a series and intersperse the lessons here on YouTube with kind of these practical tips and things that I've learned from over 15 years of playing professionally. Now, before we get started, I have two things. Number one, question of the lesson. Do you have a drumming emergency kit? And if so, what's in it? If you don't, why don't you have one? Put that in the comment section below. Let's start a conversation about it. The second thing is, 14-day trial is still going on on the website. You can jump over, follow the link below, and you can see what a monthly membership is all about. All right, so let's get down to what exactly do we need. In almost every gig I've been in, there's something that goes wrong, okay? There's gonna, maybe it's just a little thing, but there's some little thing that goes wrong. You need to be prepared for these things. You need to be ready. They don't need to catch you off guard. Things break. I was at a gig just the other night, and the string that held my snare strainer in place popped down in place. So I had to finish the song holding my snare strainer on there. Luckily, I had my emergency kit, which I had replenished just a couple days before, and I had something that I could replace it with. Okay, I was at, uh, we just had CMA Fest here, uh, Fest here the, or the CMA Awards, Country Music Awards, uh, and I did a showcase for that. I'm playing with Lori Morgan's bass player, I'm playing with Kelly Pickard's guitar player, I'm playing with, I mean, great players. So this is no slouch of a gig, but they've got a house kit, and I get there, and what happens? They don't have any felts on the cymbals, they don't have any sleeves on the cymbals, they don't, I mean, they don't have any wing nuts on the cymbals. So what am I supposed to do? Well, lucky for me, I carry a gig emergency kit. So let's go through some things that you will need in your gig emergency kit. Let's go through the kind of, these are obvious you need. You need an extra pair of sticks. If you go to a gig and you don't have an extra pair of sticks, you're just asking for it, man. You're asking for trouble. So please have at least two pairs of sticks with you. The second thing you need to have is have a drum key some kind of drum key. I keep one on my keychain and I keep one in my gig bag or my stick bag, always. I have several in different bags so that I know, okay, if something goes wrong, I have one. Now, being on the drum key thing, what if you don't have a drum key? Well, that brings me to the other thing that I like to carry, and that is some kind of tool that has multi-use. If I can <laughs> do this without cutting myself and, and make it the bloodiest YouTube video I've ever done. Um, this, I love, this is a Leatherman tool, and, and what it is is a, it's a, it's a multi-use, so it's got knives, it's got saws. I don't know what I would ever use that for, but in case you need one. Um, it also has a pair of pliers. So, I forgot my key one night, what did I do? Well. It needed just a little tightening. I had this. I could do it just enough to tighten it. Now we also have a knife on here, which is super sharp, a saw that is determined to cut me. Um, and we also have the other two things that I suggest you bring, and that is a Phillips head screwdriver and a flat head screwdriver. You never know when you'll need either. The other night I had a guitar player turn around. He needed a Phillips head. I had it right here because I just pulled the Leatherman out. Okay, some of them need, um, they, they have to cut strings. It, there's all kinds of things. Your things can be borrowed by other guys, but you want to be the person that's prepared. So I would suggest getting a multi-use tool. You can also use uh, a type of Swiss Army knife because a Swiss Army knife, again, has a Phillips head screwdriver as well as a flat head screwdriver. You want both. It's got a knife. The only thing I don't like that it doesn't have is it doesn't have the plier feature. And the great thing about this is, again, I'm going to do this without cutting myself, is you can close all of this up and it will close up into a nice little rectangular shape like this that you can just shove down in your stick bag. That's where I keep this, okay? And if you need your pliers, take them out very quickly and fix whatever you need to. Now, the next thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of talk about is you need some type of drum muffling device, all right? That'll bring us twofold. That's going to bring us talking about tape, and that's also going to bring us talking about my favorite muffling uh, device, which I'll have a review up uh, in a little bit. Uh, actually on these, and they're called drum tacks. They're new on the market. I love them. The reason I love them so much is, is where you place them really affects the overtone. They're a little bit more weighty, so it really affects the overtone of the drum. And as well as they will stick on the bottom of drums and the bottom of cymbals. So I love these things. They're called drum tacks. Uh, so you should pick some of these up. They have moon gels. They have all kinds of things. Uh, this is my preferred, though, and I keep them in my bag. I've got one on my snare right now. Now, the other thing you can bring for that is... Roll of duct tape, okay? Some form of tape. The two that I like the most are masking tape, which is gonna be black, and duct tape. Now the duct tape 
It's just a little obvious on stage. I tend to carry, you can tell, this started out as a huge roll. I used to take this on tour with me. It was about this big. Um, this is simply a, a roll of, of masking tape. Now, you can use this for a couple different things. If you've got wires running underneath your drums, you can take this and you can tape the wires so you don't trip over them. You can tape them to stands. You can tape them uh, if you have a high traffic area where maybe you've got a click beside you, you're trying to run tracks, you can tape all of that down and kind of put a pause in there and some, hey, you're not part of it. Um, put a pause in there and some slack into your, uh, into your wires and cords so that they don't get jerked down of whatever device they may be plugged into. So this is a gaff tape, masking tape, duct tape. It is a fantastic thing to bring. I keep it with me. Usually I just shove it in, in the back of my car, kind of with my spare tire, it just stays back there. I know it's always back there. Uh, now, the other thing, you can also use these, I meant to mention, you can also use this as a muffling for drums. You might go, oh, gaffs, put tape on the drums. Listen, I put all kinds of things on drums in recording sessions. I put a full paper on the drums and taped it to it, like a newspaper, you know, thick because we wanted a certain sound. So that's not bad. You can take this tape and I'll show you very quickly how you can make it. You can either tear it off in squares, just put it on there with a square. You can tear it off and how you'll see a lot of people do is you'll tear it off and they'll get a small pinch in it. They'll pinch that together, let that stick, and then you've got this portion that sticks. So now what that does is it gives it a little bit more weight when you stick it on the drum and allows it to muffle a little bit more uh, and, and a little bit more precisely. So there's several ways to do that. And you'll walk into any studio in the U.S. and you'll see tape on some drums. It's just how it happens. It can also, if you have a cymbal that's out of control, you can put a little piece of tape on the bottom of it. It'll calm the cymbal down uh, and make it a little bit drier, crisper. All right. Um, now, the other thing that we have here, I've got all these toys, um, is this has saved my butt more times than you can imagine. Uh, have some kind of snare strainer string. They make the kind of just frizzy rope string. They make the uh, more, um, uh, more the firmer uh, string, and then they also make this nylon tape stuff. This the nylon stuff is my favorite. It stays the longest. The string tends to start getting cut into, uh, and so I actually used the last of my string the other night. Had to go pick some more of this up. Um, I've gotten to where I can change this out in about two minutes, like one song, and I've got it changed. Uh, if you don't have room to bring an auxiliary snare, you need to bring an auxiliary at least, uh, not necessarily a strainer, but a strainer holder. Uh, what else we got here? What else we got? Uh, Heroes. These are simply earplugs. I keep them with me. Even if you're going to play a short jazz gig and it's going to be not very loud, you never know when the guitar player is going to bring his double sack and face it right in your ear. You just, you just don't know what stage volume is going to be like. I keep a couple packs of these in my stick bag all the time, all right? I keep one open all the time and then a couple spares. They're not going to give you perfect hearing. They're going to cut out a lot of the high end. I also have some molds that make it more acoustically pleasing. Uh, but these are a necessity because you may get in a live situation where the bands before you are playing extremely loud. You really should have some of these. You're, you're hearing you only get it once. I'm, I'm not going to be your mom, but seriously, you should protect it. Um, everybody doesn't mind getting a tinnitus until they get it, <laughs> and then they wish they would have protected their hearing. That brings us to the cymbals. We have, we have all different types of things for the cymbals, and what you need to do, and you can buy this at any guitar center or the equivalent of where you are, you can buy it from Amazon, is a pack of various uh, sized felts and cymbal parts. All right. If you want to, you can get, I've showed these before, these are actually made by Aquarian. They're cymbal toppers. I've used them several times. They simply go on top of any cymbal stand with a flathead screwdriver. Hey, we got that because we got our Leatherman tool, right? And so whenever I did the award show last year, I actually just tacked these on. It took me about three seconds to fix it. Tacked it on, screwed it on, was done. Then when I was done, unscrewed it, pulled it off, put it back in my bag. Those are very quick fixes. You can get those from Aquarian. The yellow are for crash cymbals, the red are for heavier cymbals like rides, 20, 22 inches and above. But if you don't have that, you always should carry various felts, all right? So this felt would go for the underside uh, of a bottom hi-hat cymbal. Uh, I have washers here. This would go for maybe um, the clutch on your hi-hat. Uh, this would go for a crash or a ride cymbal. I have several types of washers. I have uh, one that's just a uh, plastic, kind of a molded plastic one, and I have a metal one. Uh, the thing that you need to go with that is a cymbal sleeve. So you would put the washer there, you put the cymbal sleeve on, a felt cymbal felt on top of that. And then I keep extra 
cymbal topper, so cymbal screws, so you can, you can screw that in there and keep the cymbal on there. Now the kit I played on the other day, again, great band, house kit, it had no cymbal topper, so I, had to, I almost used my whole kit. I mean, I was using all parts because we had three cymbal stands I had to do. The other thing that you can do, because I didn't have enough cymbal sleeves, is I took my tape that I bring with me, and I took some gaff tape and I wrapped the cymbal stand where the cymbal would be sitting because we were only playing about 15 songs. So I knew that would at least get me through the gig. It's not a permanent fix, but I know I could do that, put this on there, felt, symbol, felt, and everything would be good, right? Those are, those are the most important. The other thing I would, I would suggest you bring in a larger emergency kit is a backup snare head. I've got my Aquarian backup snare head here. It can even be an older head that you've replaced, okay? So one that you thought was worn out, put that in a box in a, in a small drum head box and put that in the back of your trunk or in your gig bag, lay it beside your gig bag somewhere. You, because if you're just needing to get through the gig, it doesn't have to be a perfect sound. It just needs to be there so that you can fix it. All right. So we've got cymbal felts, we've got cymbal washers, we have cymbal sleeves, we have cymbal toppers. You could just avoid all that and get the Aquarian ones. Uh, again, yellow for crashes, red are for rides. Then we have tape. We have a multi-use tool that's going to have pliers as well as uh, different types of screwdrivers and preferably a knife. We need snare strainers, some kind of string to hold that on there. Earplugs, an extra pair of sticks. What else am I forgetting? Tape. Um, and, and there's always other things. You know, I usually bring an extra mic cable just in case somebody's forgot theirs. There's a short. I usually bring a couple of uh, lugs for uh, different toms and whatnot in case one of mine bottoms out. There's a lot of things that I've learned to bring over the year. Some type of drum muffling. Uh, but these are all things that will fit into a very small space. I fit them all in the front of my uh, stick bag. But the important thing is you need an emergency kit because there will be emergencies on the gig. Everybody's going to be looking at you and you're going to be the one that's sitting there with a snare strainer that's broke and you have nothing to fix it. All right. Hopefully those tips have helped you again. Put your thoughts in the comment section below. Check out the 14 day free trial if you've wondered what a membership is like. And always you can email me, Stephen at stevensdrumshed.com with any questions. We'll talk to you next time.